Peace and blessings, everyone. The Heavenly Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, that sitteth on the right hand of the Heavenly Father, in the heaven of heavens, bless us all. We're going to begin in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us for our sins, as we forgive those that sin against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. All praises to the Most High, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, that sitteth on the right hand of the Father, in the heaven of heavens, bless us all. Amen. So we're going to begin in the book of John, chapter 7. And we're going to read verse 37. John chapter 7, verse 37. So this is um, the book of John chapter 7, verse 37. Let's read the scripture. So it says, uh, let me let's see here. John seven thirty seven. So it says, in the last day, that great day of the feast. So we're reading about the last day of the Feast of Tabernacles. And we read that in verse 1. It says, and after these things, Jesus walked in Galilee. For he would not walk in Jewry, meaning Judea, for because the Jews sought to kill him. So you had the chief priests, elders, and scribes of Israel that were seeking to kill our Lord Jesus Christ. Then it says, now the Jews, meaning Israel's feast of tabernacles was at hand. See, So by the last day of this feast of tabernacles, which was an eight-day feast that Israel observed, that commemorated Israel dwelling in booths, Israelites dwelling in tabernacles for the 40 years that we were in the wilderness and how the Most High provided for us and gave us shelter throughout those 40 years amongst these booths and tabernacles that, that we lived in for the 40 years that we were in the wilderness before we entered into the promised land. And then once we were in the promised land, this was a feast that would be kept at Jerusalem. Okay, but at the beginning of the feast, the Lord did not openly appear at Jerusalem in front of everyone because they were seeking to kill him. But by the midst of the feast and by the end of the feast, our Lord was preaching and teaching the words of the Father in heaven, right? So let's go back to this 37 verse, right? John chapter 7, verse 37. So let's see here. So John chapter 7, verse 37 says, In the last day, that great day of the feast. So this is the last day of the Feast of Tabernacles, which was kept at Jerusalem. The Lord himself was there observing the Feast of Tabernacles. It says, Jesus stood and cried. So the Lord stood up in the midst of the temple and he cried aloud, see, saying, if any man, any man thirst, let him come on to me and drink, see. So amongst the children of Israel at the Feast of Tabernacles, the Lord stood up and he cried aloud. And he spoke to the people and said, "If for those that are thirsting, thirsting after obtaining God's righteousness, to be right in the sight of God, that are thirsting for the knowledge of God, let him come unto me, see, and drink. So if we're thirsting for righteousness, we have to come to Christ. 
because he has a drink, meaning a spiritual living water that he could provide for us. But we have to be thirsting for it. That's what he was telling the people of the children of Israel during the Feast of Tabernacles on the last day. Because that last day was a, a holy convocation. So all the people that travel from all throughout the land of Israel or wherever they may have been scattered throughout the world that were there keeping the feast, you know, understand that this last day was, was a convocation, a gathering. So there was, you know, a multitude of people that were there at the temple and that were in that whole vicinity of the temple at Jerusalem. So the Lord, during this last day of the Feast of Tabernacles, is declaring to the children of Israel that he has a, a, a living spiritual water that they can drink if they're thirsting. And this thirst and desire that Christ is speaking about is for those that are truly seeking the righteousness of the Most High. If you're thirsting for that, the Lord said, you got to come to me and I have a living spiritual water that you can drink. So then he continues to say, he that believeth on me. So to believe on Jesus is to believe that Jesus is the Lord, the Christ, the Messiah of Israel. That he is the son of God. He that believeth on me, as the scripture hath said. See, So now the Lord is quoting a scripture that's referencing those of Israel that's thirsting after righteousness that the Most High has a living spiritual water that they can drink from. But we must understand to obtain this living spiritual water, we got to come to Christ. So that's why it says, he that believeth on me as the scripture has said, meaning if, if those of Israel believe that Jesus is the Lord and Christ of Israel, then what's going to come to pass is in our life is a scripture that was already written by the prophet Isaiah. He that believeth on me as the scripture hath said, out of his belly, see the inward part, because God desires for us to desire his truth in the inward part. See, David said in Psalm 51, thou, meaning God, desirest truth in the inward part. As a matter of fact, let's just read that verse since we mentioned that. Let's, let's go to Psalm 51, right? Let's get Psalm 51. Let's read Psalm 51. Psalm 51 is a Psalm of David, King of Israel. And David actually wrote this Psalm, you know, when he committed, after he committed adultery with Bathsheba and uh, Uriah's wife. And the man was, you know, very remorseful and of a contrite spirit for what he had done in, you know, committing adultery. So these are the words that he spoke. And I'll read Psalm 51 and um, let's see what verse. I'll read from the... Um, Let's read from the sixth verse to get right to the point. Uh, bear with me one second. Uh, bear with me one second, everyone. I'm just trying to fix something here. So this is um, Psalm chapter 51. And um, let's read verse... Six. Behold, so 
These are words that David spoke in the spirit, acknowledging what, what, how, you know, what the Father desires of us. You know, when we read in the book of John, um, uh, the fourth chapter, when our Lord was speaking to the Israelite woman of Samaria, what, what did Christ teach her? Well, he taught her many things. One of the things he taught her was that, that God is a spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and truth. Then he continued to say, for the father seeketh such to worship him. So what he was teaching the woman of Samaria was that the heavenly father desires of us as his people to worship him, to pray to him, you know, to obey him, to follow him in a spiritual way. And in truth, meaning according to his word, as it is written, the Father seeketh such to worship him, right? So in similar context is written this scripture. This is Psalm 51 and 6. Behold, thou, see, this thou is the most high, the Father, desirous truth in the, what does it say there? Inward parts. Inward parts. So, the Most High desires of us to seek His righteousness, His truth. And where does He want His truth to reside? Within us. Deep within us. That's why I say, and in the hidden part. So, it's expounding the point in the beginning of the verse. The hidden part, the inward part, that's going into what? The heart of our hearts, deep inside us, deep in our heart, deep in our mind, right? Thou, meaning the Father, shall make me to know wisdom. The knowledge and wisdom of God will be imparted onto us within us if we what? Seek it. We have to seek it. Remember the Lord said we have to seek it. We have to thirst after it. So let's read it again. Behold, thou desirest truth in the inward parts, and in the hidden part thou shalt make me to know wisdom. So now we're seeing in this verse, just like the Lord taught the woman of Samaria, that the Father desires of us that we seek his truth, his wisdom, in a way where it's coming from our heart. That's where the, the true worship of God is. It's within us. It's not about going to Jerusalem. It's not about this mountain or that mountain or this city or that city. We have to go on a long journey. And this is the place that we must ultimately get to to know the Most High. No. To get to the, know the Most High, to know the Father, for the Father to reveal His Son within us, He wants us to seek His truth in the inward parts of us, right? So when we go back to the scripture in John chapter 7, It says, he that believeth on me, as the scripture hath said. So the, the scripture he's quoting, by the way, is, is the book of Isaiah 44. And in Isaiah 44, and verse, it, it starts, I'll get you the verse real quick. It, it starts at the, f the first verse, but the main part is, few verses down. So let's just read it. Let's get the scripture our Lord quoted to show us that when Christ taught, he taught out of the scriptures. What scriptures? What was already written during his time. Remember, during the time of our Lord and his disciples preaching the word of God, the scriptures that they had to teach out of were what was written in the law of Moses and the books of the prophets and the Psalms of David. 
So we can understand during that during the time that Christ spoke, during the Feast of Tabernacles, for example, you know, the New Testament wasn't written yet. The, the book of Matthew, Mark, Luke, you know, John wasn't written yet. The book of Acts, we know that definitely wasn't written yet because though, though that, his, that, that um, history didn't play out until after the Lord ascended to the Father in heaven. The book of Revelation, the the, the, past, the epistles of, of of Peter and James and, and, and John and, and uh, the brother Paul, Jude and those men, th those scriptures were not written yet. So whenever we read Christ teaching as it is written or as the scripture saith, always know that he's quoting the law of Moses and the books of the prophets and the Psalms of David. See, Christ said, lo, I come in a volume of a book that is written of me. See, so Christ would teach out of the volume of the book that was written of him to bring out that all the scriptures pertaining to the Lord and Christ and the Messiah of Israel, the Son of God, that he was the one that came to fulfill those scriptures. So let's get this scripture, scripture he was quoting. He that believeth on me as the scripture hath said. Out of his belly shall flow rivers, rivers of, what it say, living water. Remember, that's what we read. Out of his belly shall flow. Let me just make sure I finish that verse. He that believeth on me, meaning he that believes that Jesus of Nazareth is the Lord and Christ of Israel. As the scripture hath said, we're going to get it in a moment. Isaiah 44. Out of his belly, in the inward part. Remember, remember we're reading in Psalm 51. Thou desirest truth in the inward part. The belly, see, shall flow, flow, rivers of what? Living water, see? So what is this drink that the Lord was speaking about in verse 37? In verse 37 here. A living spiritual water that we can drink that leads to us abounding in the fruits of the Spirit, see? Simultaneously purging the works of the flesh, sin, pride, anger, wrath, grudging, bitterness, fornication, adultery, idolatry. So let's get to scripture our Lord quoted and taught out of. Isaiah 44. It is Isaiah chapter 44. And let's read from verse 1, right? Isaiah chapter 44 and verse 1. So, so here we go. Isaiah 44 and 1. So there we go. All right. So it says, yet now hear. Meaning, hear with attention and obedience. O Jacob, my servant. See, so who are the servants of the Most High? Jacob. Who is this Jacob? He was the father of the 12 tribes of Israel. The son of Isaac. And Isaac was the son of Abraham. So we're talking about our fathers. Jacob. O Jacob, my servant. Remember when the Lord was speaking with the woman in Samaria and the Lord was telling her about the living water? And she said, Art thou greater than our father? What did she say? Remember, she said, because the Lord was telling her, let's just get the point real quick. I know we're going through a lot of scriptures, but you'll see why we're going. Let's just, let me just get the point. Let's go to John 4. Because it's it, it goes exactly with John chapter 7, by the way. So it's not like we're going all over the place and these scriptures don't tie together. <laughs> so this is John chapter 4, right? Let's read John chapter 4 and verse 10. Jesus answered and said unto her, If thou knewest the gift of God, so the, so the gift of God, when we read in the scriptures, is, is going into the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. 
And who it is that saith to thee, give me the drink? Because when you read earlier in the verses, the Lord was at the at Jacob's well with the woman of Samaria, and he asked her for a drink of water. And then she's shocked because, you know, traditionally, the, the circumcision of Israel, you know, they didn't deal with the Israelites in Samaria. So she's like just totally taken aback. She's totally shocked that the, the Lord would even be asking her for a drink of water. Because ordinarily, Israel that would come from Jerusalem or Judea, you know, or that, you know, that was part of the circumcision. Not that Christ was part of the circumcision, but she knew that he came from um, Jerusalem, Judea to Samaria. So she kind of assumed that, you know, he's probably going to treat me like the rest of, you know, the circumcision of Israel. So she's shocked. And so the Lord, he says, Jesus answered and said unto her, thou knewest the gift of God and who it is, who it is that saith to thee, give me to drink. <laughs> thou wouldest ask of him and he would have given the living water. See, so the one that's speaking to the woman of Samaria, he has the ability to give living water. So the Lord, you know, it's it's, it's the, the funny thing about this whole, you know, conversation that they're having here is the Lord was thirsty from, from his journey that he took from Jerusalem, you know, to Samaria on the way to Galilee. And he asked her for a drink of water that came from Jacob as well. And the Lord's like, look, if you knew who was speaking to you, I mean, if you knew that I was, if you only knew who, who I am, the Messiah, the Christ of Israel, the son of the living God, you'd be asking him for living water. See, and then it says, the woman saith unto him, sir, thou hast nothing to draw with, and the well is what? Deep. From whence, meaning from where then hast thou that living water? So f f where are you going to give me this living water? Because we're here at Jacob's well. The well runs deep. You have nothing to draw water with. So she thought that the Lord was going to, you know, give her some, you know, water from, from this well that she would drink that would lead to her, you know, uh, drinking this living water that would give her life. So then she says in verse 12, Art thou greater than our father Jacob? Are you a greater man than Jacob? That you have some living water to give me? This, you got some better water than the water that's here at our forefather's well, Jacob? Are thou greater than our father, Jacob? So that shows us that the woman of Samaria was a descendant of who? Jacob. She was Israelite. And she knew that the Lord was an Israelite. What she didn't know was... <laughs> Like he said, if thou knewest the gift of God and who it is that saith to thee, give me the drink, thou wouldest ask of him living water and he would have given thee, thou wouldest ask of him and he would have given thee living water. So if you only knew who, who, who I am and who it is that's speaking to you, you'd be asking me for the living water right now. So eventually when we read on in the chapter, she, you know, the Lord told her plainly who he was. And she believed. Because he revealed to her later in the chapter that he is the, the Lord and Christ of Israel, the Messiah of Israel. But uh, we was just going to this point here in verse 12 because she said, Thou greater than our father Jacob, which gave us the well and drank thereof himself and his children and his cattle. So she was, you know, telling the Lord, look, are you, are you a greater man than our father Jacob? You have a, a better, you got, you, you got, are you greater than Jacob? Where you have the ability to give me living spiritual water that I can drink from? Jacob himself drank from this well. His children, Judah, Benjamin, Levi, you know, Simeon, and this, you know, and his cattle. Jesus answered and said unto her, Whosoever drinketh of this water shall thirst again. See, 
whoever drinks of this water that comes from this well, eventually they're going to thirst. So he thought that the Lord was going to give her some water from Jacob's well there, and then she would, you know, or, or, she, or she had some water better, <laughs> you know, th than from Jacob's well. But the, what is the Lord telling her? Look, whoever drinks of the water that comes from this well, eventually they're going to thirst again. But but who, but whoso drinketh of the water that I shall give him, see, the living spiritual water that I shall give him shall never thirst. But the water that I shall give him shall be in him. In him. Because like David said, thou desirest truth where? In the inward part. David understood that God desires of us, the Heavenly Father desires of us to seek his truth from a place where it's coming from our heart, deep within our heart. It's not just, you know, it's not quoting scriptures, knowing scriptures. It's about these scriptures being truly in our heart, in our inward part. But the water that I shall give him shall be in him, the inward part, right? The belly, a well of water springing up into everlasting life, see? So Christ has the living water to impart onto us that we can drink from. And it's like water that continually is like spring, like from a spring, if you ever actually been to an actual, you know, body of water where there's a spring, the, the, the water just like, just, it's this continuous supply of water, like bubbling water that, and, and you can go in that water and it's just a continual supply. Well, the Lord has that like on a spiritual plane, a living, spiritual, cleanse, cleansing water that leads to us being spiritual. And by being spiritual, abounding in the fruits of the spirit. Simultaneously, this living water purges us from, it cleanses us from, from, from sin because it's coming from the Most High through Christ. So it's through this living water that we overcome, how we endure patiently and overcome sin, temptation to sin. To endure faithfully in the keeping of God's commandments, right? So when we go back, right, to Isaiah 44. Yet now here. See? Yet now here. Yet now here. O Jacob. My servant. And Israel. The children of Jacob, because Jacob's name was changed to Israel, whom I have chosen. So who did the Most High choose amongst all nations to be above all nations? The 12 tribes of Israel. This first verse talking about the 12 tribes of Israel. Thus saith the Lord, thus saith the Most High, that made thee. And form thee from the womb. See? So the Most High made us. He formed us. He chose us from the womb. Which will help thee. So who is our help? Who is our Savior? Who is our Deliverer? The Most High through Christ. Fear not. O Jacob, see, fear not, O Jacob, because even though Israel is under reproach because we broke God's commandments, the Lord said, fear not, O Jacob, my servant, and thou Jeshurun, whom I have chosen. So Jeshurun is another um, way that the Most High call us by Israel. Jeshurun meaning like upright one. 
So whenever you read about Jeshurun or Jacob or Israel, it's talking about our people, the tribes of Israel. Now let's check out verse 3. Let's see what verse 3 is talking about. Because this is the scripture that our Lord quoted during the Feast of Tabernacles, on the last day of the Feast of Tabernacles. Remember when he said, He that believeth on me, as the scripture hath said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. Okay, well, let's read it. For I, see, so it's the most high through Christ. That's John 14, 23. Will pour water upon him that is what? Thirsty. Didn't Jesus Christ teach that if any man thirst, let him come unto me? Well, I will pour water, meaning living spiritual water. This. So this water that we're reading about here in Isaiah 44 and 3 is the same exact identical water that the Lord was speaking to the Israelite woman of Samaria to. The same water. Not a different water, the same water. For I will pour water upon him that is what? Thirsty. So if we're hungry, thirsty, desirous for the righteousness which is of the Most High, if we desire that, in our inward part, if we desire that in our belly, deep, deep, deep down inside, the Most High will give it to us. Because when it's coming from that place, it means that we're coming from a standpoint where we are being what? Sincere. We're not, we're not into seeking the Most High's righteousness and learning this truth to serve the Most High, you know, for any ulterior motives or hidden agendas, we seek and thirst after the Most High's righteousness because we know that what? Without the Most High and Christ, we're nothing. See? So the Lord, the Most High, is promising. He said, For I will pour water upon him that is thirsty and floods. Meaning floods of water <laughs> upon the what? Dry ground. So picture a dry ground, parched dry ground, right? And then the rains come and the floods come. What happens in a short amount of time? The grass grows, the grass flowers, the plants start to flower. That's symbolic of us, the children of Israel, we're that dry ground. But the Lord said, I'm going to pour water upon him that is thirsty and floods upon the dry ground. How do we know that the dry ground is talking about us? Because the Lord said, for I will pour water upon him that is what? Thirsty. So it's, it's just talking about us as people. The Lord is comparing us as people to the, we're that dry ground. I will for my spirit, see? So what is the living water? The spirit of the Most High in Christ. Upon thy seed. Who's thy seed? Jacob. Israel. Jeshurun. I will pour my spirit upon thy seed. So what are we reading here in Isaiah 44 and 3? This is what Peter described in Acts chapter 2 as the promise of the Father. Remember Peter said in Acts 2, for the promise is unto you and to your children and to all that are far off. That's in Acts chapter 2. Remember when Peter said, repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ for the remission of sins that ye may receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. And then he, he continued on to say, for the promise is unto you. The promise of the outpour of the Holy Spirit is made unto you, Israel. That's what Peter was telling the people of the children of Israel during the Feast of First Fruits when we read in Acts chapter 2. I will pour out my spirit upon thy seed and my blessing 
Remember the Lord told a woman of Samaria, if thou knowest the gift of God and who it is that speaketh to thee, thou would be asking him of, <laughs> to, you'd be asking him for the living water right now. See, but at that point, she hadn't discerned yet who he was till later on in the conversation. She confessed that Jesus was the Christ of Israel. So it says in verse uh, four, and they, meaning the children of Israel, shall spring up, meaning come to life, as among the grass, see, as willows by the water courses. So grass and willow, that's continually fed, a flow of water is going to be what? Green. See, it's going to be fruitful. So this is all symbolic of how we would be. Remember John said when he was baptizing the children of Israel, he said, every tree that bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire, meaning unquenchable fire. And then he spoke about one that was mightier than him, greater than him, preferred before him. Who was before him? Because Jesus Christ was with God before the world was. What did he say about that man, Jesus? He said, there is one among you that you know not as greater than me. I'm not even worthy to bear his shoes. He shall baptize you with the what? Holy Spirit. See? So there's another reference. We was reading in John chapter 4, John chapter 7. We're reading here all throughout the scriptures, man. All praises that. Even John was talking about the outpouring of the Holy Spirit that comes through who? The one that is preferred before him, greater than him, who is before him. That's Jesus Christ. So now let's go back to finish up. Let's finish up this uh, Bible study this evening here in John chapter 7. chapter 7, right? He that believeth on me, he that believes that Jesus is the Lord and Christ of Israel, the Son of God, as the scripture has said, meaning as it is written in the scripture, out of his belly <laughs> shall flow rivers of living water. So where did we read such a scripture? In the book of Isaiah, chapter 44, verse 3. So Christ said, he that believes that I am the Lord and Christ, the Messiah of Israel, there's a blessing in store for you. As the scripture is written, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. So the Lord said, look, if you believe on me, you're going to receive the blessing of Isaiah 44. And it's not just written in Isaiah 44. It's written all throughout the law and the prophets. But we just got one scripture, you know, in particular. Where it speaks about living water. So we should be thirsting to drink a living water. So if it's living water, obviously it's a spiritual water. So it's, a, it's a living spiritual water. And what is this living spiritual water? We read it in Isaiah 44 and 3. I will pour out my spirit. See, that goes into the spirit of the Most High and Christ. Because the Father and Christ worketh together. Remember Jesus said, the Father worketh hitherto and I work. See, so there is no outpouring of the Holy Spirit upon us where it's the Most High and Christ is not that mediator between us and the Most High. The proof of that is, before we, we're almost done with this lesson, Israel, I just want to read this, uh, John 14, 24.
Because in this chapter, the Lord was speaking about the comforter, the spirit of truth. So I wanted to read this, this verse here, John 14, 23. I'll read from 22. Judas saith unto him, not Iscariot. Okay, so this is a brother named Judas that was going to ask the Lord a question, but this Judas was not Judas Iscariot. Lord. See, so Judas is calling Jesus the Lord because he is our Lord. How is it that thou will manifest thyself? Meaning, how is it that you're going to manifest yourself as the comforter, the spirit of truth? Unto us and not to the world. So Judas is like, okay, you, you're going to manifest yourself as the comforter, the spirit of truth. How is that going to happen? How are you going to manifest yourself to us and not to the to the world? Why not to the to the world? Because not all Israel believed that Jesus was the Lord and Christ of Israel. So those that remained in that unbelief, you know, without repenting, you know, in that unbelief, they would not receive the living water. So then it's saying verse 23. Jesus answered and said unto him, if a man love me, meaning if a man truly loves me, he will keep my words. So what's the context of keeping the words of Jesus Christ? To keep the words of Christ is to guard them with our life. This keeping is, it's not just hearing it. It's being faithful unto the words of Christ. Being obedient unto the words of Christ. It's the words of Christ being in the what? Remember Psalm 51? The inward part. Remember, thou desirest truth in the inward part. In the hidden part, thou shalt make me to know wisdom. What is the hidden part? Deep within us, deep in our belly, deep in our gut, deep in our spirit, deep in our heart of hearts. That's where we should desire God's righteousness. And thirst after his knowledge. It has to come from a place. Not a place that we have to travel to. To obtain it. Like the Lord taught the woman of Samaria. Neither in this mountain nor yet at Jerusalem shall you worship the father. <laughs> he, what did he tell her? He said, look, God is a spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and truth. The worship of God is within you. It's within you. So, if a man love me, meaning if a man truly loves me, he will keep my words. We're going to guard and keep the words of Christ locked, guarded in our heart. We're not going to give place to Satan, to give Satan an opportunity to snatch away that which is sown in our heart. What is that which has been sown in our hearts? That Jesus Christ is the son of the living God, that he is the way, the truth, the life, and no man can come to the Father but by him. So now, if a man truly loves Christ, and we truly keep his words, right? We Remember, our faith, Jesus is the author and finisher of our faith. Our faith begins with Christ. It's matured and perfected in Christ. And my, so I said, if a man love me, he will keep my words. See? And my father will love him. So how do we obtain the love of the father? We have to keep the words of who? His son. And we, who is the we? Is that singular or plural? That's plural. Talking about the Father and the Son. We 
will come unto him, meaning in the form of the comforter, the spirit of truth, the living water, and make our abode with him. That's powerful. Remember we read in Isaiah 44? That if we hunger, that if we thirst for the living water, that he gonna what? Pour out his spirit upon us. That's what spirit is that talking about? The same spirit that Christ taught here in Isaiah, I mean uh John chapter 14. The spirit of truth. The spirit of truth. What is the spirit of truth? Whom the world cannot receive. That's why Judas said, How will thou reveal? How are you going to manifest yourself as the spirit of truth and not to the whole world? Well, why, why can't the world receive him, receive the spirit of truth? Because it, meaning the world, meaning the chief priests, elders, and scribes of Israel, any Israelite that reject Jesus, because it seeth him not. See? Unlike the disciples of the Lord and the ones that believed in the, in the Lord, they saw him as the Son of God. Neither knoweth him. The chief priests, elders, and scribes that banded together with Pilate and the Herod to, to kill Christ, they didn't see him as Peter and the apostles and Mary Magdalene and the rest of Israel that uh, believed in Christ. They, 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 they rejected him. But ye know him, meaning you know who I am, for he dwelleth with you, meaning I as the truth dwell among you. Because remember in verse 6, what did he refer to himself as? The truth. Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the what? Truth. See? For he dwelleth with you as the truth and shall be in you. So Christ was there in the flesh among them as the truth. Then he says, and shall be in you. Why I say shall? That's future tense. Because the Lord knew on this day he was going to be crucified and killed during the preparation of the Passover. That's when our Lord was being prepared to be killed during the preparation of the Passover. So he was killed during the 14th day of the first month during the preparation of the Passover. He knew on this day he was going to be killed and buried. That he would be risen. Turn on to them for 40 days, then to then ascend to the Father. That after his ascension into heaven, he would return on to them in the form of what? We're going to read it. I will not leave you, because he knew he was going to ascend to the Father in heaven. Comfortless. I will come to you. See, the Lord told him, I'm going to return on to you in the form of the comforter. So Judas is trying to figure out how, how are you going to manifest yourself unto us, but not to the whole world that seeth you not, neither believeth in you. How will you, how, how is this going to happen? Jesus answered and said unto him, if a man love me, meaning if a man truly loves me, he will keep my words. You mean he going to guard what I say with his life. No one should be able to snatch away what is sown in our heart. Because if they're trying to snatch away that which was sown in our heart, that means they have Satan in them. So we have to resist the devil and he will flee. And how do we resist the devil? Keep the words of Christ locked and guarded in our heart. The inward part, the belly, however you want to describe it, deep inside. And my father will love him and we will make, we will come on to him. See, we will come on to him in the form of the comforter. Because he said, I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you, right? And we will come on to him and make our abode with him. So what we were reading in Isaiah 44 and 3, where it said, I will pour out my spirit upon you, upon thy seed. In the form of the comforter. That's the most high in Christ, right? So now when we go back to John chapter 7. Verse 38. It says, he that believeth on me. 
as the scripture has said, see, as it is written in Isaiah 44 and 3, out of his belly, because God desires truth where? In the inward part, the belly, deep within our spirit, in our heart, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water, meaning living spiritual water. That's the word. It's the spirit of the Most High in Christ abiding within us, among us. And when the spirit of the Most High is within us, that seed, that word that has been planted in our heart, it just grows and grows and grows and abounds and abounds and abounds. We're spiritually growing and living from our spiritual living water. So, remember he said, for he dwelleth with you and sh shall be in you. What does shall be in you mean? Future tense. Because Christ was there in the flesh among them as the truth, like he said in John 14 and 6. But then he spoke about the spirit of truth, which would be Christ not in the flesh, but Christ being with us in what? In spirit. In the form of the comforter, the spirit of truth, the Holy Spirit, right? That's what this verse is going to go into. So we're going to hear in this verse. But this spake he of the spirit. So the living water is a spiritual living water, right? Okay. But this spake he of the spirit, which... They, who's the they? Remember we read in Isaiah 44? Jacob, Israel, Jeshurun, in other words, the 12 tribes of Israel. Remember Peter said in Acts 2, the promise is unto you and to your children and to all that are far off. What promise? The promise of the Holy Spirit. That we obtain by repenting from our sins and being baptized in water in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ in Nazareth. Meaning under his power, under his authority, under his influence. See, but this spake he of the spirit which they, the children of Israel, that believe on him, see, that believe on the Lord, should receive, see, for the Holy Ghost or the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of Truth, the Comforter, the Spirit of Truth, the living water was not yet given. See, so when the Lord was teaching about the living water, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water, that gift was not yet given. Now, what does that mean? Because that Jesus was not yet glorified. So until the Lord be glorified, Israel could not receive the promise of the Father, which is the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. So when was our Lord Jesus Christ glorified? When he was risen from the dead and declared, and declared to be the Son of God with power. He appeared unto his disciples after his resurrection. He was with them for 40 days. See? And at the end of those 40 days, he would ascend to the Father to enter into his glory, to sit on the right hand of God. Glory meaning because all power and authority would be given unto him. The same glory that he had with God before the world was that he exercised in the creation of the heaven and earth and all things living, including us. See, So until the Lord would ascend to the Father to enter into his glory, Israel could not receive the Holy Spirit. That's why he told them, that you must tarry ye here. Let's just get the point. Go. Let's go to Acts chapter one. We'll end it here. Israel. Go up. <laughs> Acts chapter one. Check out what the Lord says here in Acts chapter one.
So it says, and being assembled, this is Acts chapter 1 and 4, and being assembled together with them, meaning the Lord was assembled together with his disciples. At this time, it was 11 disciples, because um, Matt, Matt, Matthias was not um, brought into the ministry till after the Lord ascended to the Father. So it says, and being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father. Wow, how about that, Israel? Remember we were referencing the promise of the Father, the promise of the Father, the promise of the Father. We was mentioning Peter in Acts chapter 2. Well, here's another mention of the promise of the Father. And we know the promise of the Father according to all the scriptures we read thus far, that the promise of the Father is the most high pouring out of his spirit, the spirit of him and his son upon us. And we will be like the grass that grew upon the dry ground. And the willows growing, flourishing among the what? Water courses. Right? So for the promise of the Father, they had to wait for it. Remember we read the Holy Spirit was not yet given. Because Jesus Christ was not yet what? Glorified. How was he glorified? When he was risen from the dead to ascend to the Father to sit on the right hand of God and enter into his glory. Like he taught the two men that were walking from Jerusalem to Emmaus. Didn't, what did he tell them? Ought not the Christ have suffered these things to, to enter into his glory? Remember he said that? Hold this real quick. Luke 24. Look what the Lord said here. Ought not Christ, meaning ought not the Christ that's written over in the scriptures to have suffered these things and to enter into his what? Glory. Remember we read in John 7 that the Holy Spirit was not yet given because Jesus Christ had not what? He was not yet what? Glorified. So how would he be glorified? When he ascended to the Father to sit on the right hand of God, which we read is described in the end of the chapter. And behold, I send the, here we go again, promise of my Father. How many times have we been reading about the promise of, of the Father? It's written of all throughout the law of the prophets and the Psalms of David, but we read one particular promise in Isaiah 44, verses 1 through 3, right? I think we read verse 4. So he said, wait for the promise of my father upon you. Well, I know he said what he said. Uh, and behold, I send the promise of my father upon you. But tarry ye, meaning wait in the city of Jerusalem until ye be endued, empowered, See, until you be endued, blessed with power from on what? High. Now, what does the scriptures teach us where, the far, where God dwells? He doesn't dwell in temples made with hands, but he dwells where? In the heaven of heavens. So they would have to wait for the power to come from the throne of the Most High to be endued with spiritual power. And he led them out as far as to Bethany, and he lifted up his hands and blessed them. And it came to pass, while he blessed them, he, meaning Jesus Christ, was parted from them and carried up into heaven on high. In Mark 16, 19, it describes it as Christ ascending to sit on the right hand of God. See, that's the glory that we're reading in Luke 24 in the verse earlier, right? It says, um, and they worshipped him. So they worshipped him. And returned to Jerusalem with joy. Great joy. So even though the Lord ascended to sit on the right hand of God and departed from them, why, why would they rejoice and worship him? Because they knew that he would what? Return unto them in the form of the comforter. Remember we read in John 14, I will not leave you comfortless. I will come unto you. So knowing that fact, they rejoiced. Why else would you rejoice if the Lord 
that was crucified, killed, risen from the dead, was with you for 40 days. Then he ascended to the Father. You would think that they would be crying and mourning and sorrowful. No, it was the opposite of that. They actually rejoiced and worshipped the Lord as the Son of God. See, so going back to this point in Acts 1. Acts chapter 1, right? And 4, and being assembled together with them, meaning he was assembled, assembled with his 11 disciples, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, just like you read in Luke 24. But wait. Remember he said, tarry ye here in the city of Jerusalem? But wait. For the what? Promise of the Father. What is the promise of the Father? The Spirit of of the Most High in Christ, the Most High putting His Word within us. See, the Most High giving us through Christ gifts according to the measure and gift of Christ. These are the different gifts that the Lord gives us through faith in in, in the Son of of God. We all have gifts. We all have talents and blessings that the Most High has bestowed us with. It's for it's up to us to abound in these gifts. That the Most High through Christ gives us. And what's going to hinder us from abounding in these gifts is conforming to the world. Friendship with the world. That when we are truly serving the Most High in Christ. And we're seeking the Most High's kingdom and his righteousness. Which is Christ. Then we're going to be able to abound in these fruits, right? So it says that wait for the promise of the Father. Which saith he, ye have heard of me. Because he taught him. He, so this is after the Lord ascended. It was with his disciples within the 40 days after his resurrection. But what he's referring to here is when he taught them, like we read in John the 14th chapter, for example, or in John the 7th chapter, for example, or when he taught the woman of Samaria in John chapter 4, for example, or when he taught Nicodemus in John chapter 3, right? He spoke to all of them about the promise of the Father, the Holy Spirit. For John, John the Baptist, truly baptized with water. See, so John the Baptist truly was baptized in the children of Israel in water. But ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit, not many days hence. When they therefore were come together, they asked of him. So this is now the day that the Lord is actually going to send to the Father to sit on the right hand of God. So they think that they're going to receive the outpouring of the Holy Spirit in the sense that in the day they receive it, that what? Well, let's read on. Saying, Lord, see, will thou at this time restore again the kingdom to who? Israel. Remember we read where, he, where the Most High said concerning Jacob, Israel, Jeshron, to fear not. Why? Because the Most High has prepared for us a kingdom. The Lord said, my father's kingdom are many, mount are many mansions. If it wasn't true, I, I wouldn't tell you. It's true. That's why I tell you. All right, my battery's going to get ready. To Hold on. Uh, bear with me one second. My battery's going to go dead. I just want to finish up that verse. Uh, bear with me one second because my phone is getting ready to die here. All right. So let's wrap this up. Um, when they therefore were come together, they asked of him, saying, Lord, would thou? At this time, restore again, rebuild again the kingdom to Israel. Because remember, another promise of the father is that he would raise up the tabernacle of David that fell. He would restore the tabernacle, that a tabernacle of David that fell. David, meaning David that was king of Israel. Twelve tribes of Israel together, one nation. 
Well, the tabernacle of David is going to be risen again through the son of David, Jesus Christ. It is going to be restored again. But they thought because they were going to receive the outpour of the Holy Spirit in just a few days that once they received the Holy Spirit, Israel is going to get the kingdom to come. See? So what did they tie the outpour of the Holy Spirit to? The salvation and the restoring again to the, of, the, of the kingdom to the 12 tribes of Israel. So what does the Lord say though? And he said unto them, it is, it is not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father hath put in his own power. Meaning it is not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Heavenly Father hath put in his own power to restore again the kingdom to Israel. So this is a great scripture to show us that no man knows the times of the seasons when the Most High is going to restore again the kingdom to Israel. The, the, the kingdom being restored to Israel will be at the second coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Jacob is the end of the world. Esau, I mean Esau, I'm sorry, he said that wrong. Esau is the end of the world. Jacob is the beginning of it that follows. Jacob meaning Christ and Israel. So, you know, don't ever fall for the false teachers when they're trying to teach, oh, the Lord, because you got them out there. They talk, they're talking about, yeah, the Lord was supposed to come, where was it, 2020, 2020, 2019? Yeah, 2019. Before that, the year 2000. Before that, 1995. Before that, this year, that year, this year. During the Feast of the Memorial, the blowing of the trumpets. During this time, no one, Christ don't even know. Only the Father knows. So it wasn't, it, the Lord said that the Most High, that's in the power of the Most High. When the kingdom is going to be restored to Israel, it was not for them to know the times of the season. So if it wasn't for them to know how some men on earth know today, they know, oh, the Lord showed me. See, the Lord showed me in a vision that the Lord, it's, this is the time, this is the year. That man is straight up lying. <laughs> is he greater than Christ? The, that guy, he's saying he's the most high then. But ye shall receive power. Remember, in Luke, ye shall be endued with power from on high. After that, the Holy Ghost, meaning the Holy Spirit, is come upon you. Because Christ said, I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. And ye shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem. And in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. So Peter and the apostles would be witnesses of Christ. Beginning in Jerusalem, Acts 2. Throughout all Judea, Acts 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. <laughs> you know, and the uttermost, and Samaria, Acts chapter 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, right? Christ said, Lord, I'm with you always, even unto the end of the world, the uttermost parts of the earth. Then it says in verse 9, and when he had spoken these things, while they beheld, he was taken up. And a cloud received him out of their sight. So what is this referring to? Our Lord's ascension into heaven. See, to sit on the right hand of God, to enter into his glory. And while they looked steadfastly, meaning their eyes was fixed. <laughs> you know, like somebody's staring at something and they're not moving. They just, they're, they're like awestruck. These men's eyes were steadfastly fixed. Toward heaven where the Lord just ascended to. To sit on the right hand of God. Our Lord is entering into the throne of his what? Glory. So we know what's at hand shortly. The promise of the Father. The promise of the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. See. And while they look steadfastly toward heaven. As he, meaning Jesus Christ, went Up, see, as our Lord went up, 
He ascended to the Father to sit on the right hand of God. What does this say? Oh, bear with me. Let me just fix this here. Two men stood by them, meaning the disciples in white apparel. See, so these are two angels of the Most High. Now check out what they said in verse 11. Which also said, ye men of Galilee, ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? See, remember during the... <laughs> From the people uh, yesterday during the solar eclipse, everybody was, you know, was gazing toward heaven. Well, the, the, the disciples of the Lord were gazing toward heaven because the, the Lord ascended to the right hand of the Father. Now, you see how all these people were dismayed at the signs of heaven, um, you know, yesterday during the eclipse. Wait, wait till what's written in the scriptures come to pass. When the Lord come with thousands and ten thousands and uh, of his of his saints, men and his angels, in the day of judgment, man, that's gonna be a sight to see. So it says, which said, "Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? Why y'all staring, gazing into heaven? <laughs> like the the man that just ascended there, he's gone, poof, and that's it. This same." Jesus, see, because understand when the Lord was risen from the dead, Christ was risen from the dead to be made immortal, to live forevermore. And when he ascended, he ascended with what? Glory and power. This same Jesus, which is taken up from you, into heaven, meaning to sit on the right hand of God, the heaven of heavens, shall so come in like manner. What does it mean by manner? When the Lord ascended in that immortal, eternal body, that glorious body, and when he ascended to the Father with great power, with great glory, in like manner, He's going to what? Return. This same Jesus which is taken up from you into heaven shall so come. This, that's talking about the second coming, the second appearing of our Lord. In like manner, meaning great power and glory. As ye have seen him go into heaven. As you've seen the Lord ascending to heaven with great power and glory, he's coming back with great power and glory. So that's referencing our Lord's, our Lord's second appearance. See? And then shortly after this, the Lord returned onto them, not in the context so much of this verse, but in the context of the comfort of the spirit of truth. And that's what Acts chapter 2 and 1 go into. When the outpouring of the Holy Spirit was manifest among the disciples. See, so it came to pass what the Lord said. So uh, we'll end it there though, Israel. All praises to the Most High in, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ and Nazareth for these scriptures. Because they truly are living water. And if we thirst after the Most High's righteousness in these scriptures, then we will be filled. We will be filled. And we'll never thirst again. Because there's only one fountain of living waters. And that's the Most High through Christ. We're not to do what Israel did in the past. Most I said, my people have committed two evils. That's in Jeremiah 2 and 11. My people have committed two evils. They have forsaken me, the fountain of living waters, and have made them cisterns, broken cisterns that can hold no water. See? Because the Most High, he's the living water. 
through Christ. That's why he said, that's why Christ said, the Father and I will make our abode with him as the fountain of living water. So all praises to the Most High in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ for these scriptures. Let's do a prayer before we end it for this um, evening, uh, evening here in Arizona. But if you're on the East Coast, it's already um, past midnight. All right. Anyway, so let's get uh let's read the Psalm 119, right? We'll read Psalm 19, 119 and 1 through 8. Blessed are the undefiled in the way who walk in the law of the Lord. Blessed are they that keep his testimonies and that seek him with the whole heart. They also do no iniquity. They walk in his ways. Thou hast commanded us to keep thy precepts diligently. O oh, that my ways were directed to keep thy statutes. Then shall I not be ashamed when I have respect unto all thy commandments. I will praise thee with uprightness of heart when I shall have learned thy righteous judgments. I will keep thy statutes. O oh, forsake me not utterly. All praises to the Most High in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. For the scriptures this evening, we pray that you give us the spirit to endure faithfully in the keeping of, of your commandments and your word. We pray for the spirit of healing amongst the brothers and sisters that are going through different infirmities and sicknesses, different ailments. We pray for mercy. We pray for them. We pray for one another. Thank you, Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and Nazareth. Amen. All right, brothers and sisters, peace and blessings to your homes. Much love to each and every one of you. you know, blessings and, and peace to you and your inner joy, inner peace, healing. You know, to each and every one of uh, you, every one of us in the name of our Lord, sitting on the right hand of the Father. So that's all we have for this evening. Okay, so hopefully you can, you know, be able to uh, write these scriptures down and, and meditate in them and Pray to the Father that he um, adds, you know, to your understanding, more scriptures. Right? Like I say in Acts 17, they search the scriptures daily. So, uh, that's all we have. So, peace and blessings. Uh, let me see who's on here. We got uh, Brother Christopher. Peace and blessings to you, brother. Uh, Brother Aharon out in New York, peace and blessings to you. Sister Sharon, peace and blessings to you. Brother Dean Phillips out there in uh, Trini, peace and blessings to you. Uh, I'm, I don't know if Jesse's still with us, but uh, peace and blessings to you, Brother Jesse out in Houston. Uh, Sister Hadassah out there with the Brother Dean in Trini, peace and blessings to you and your homes. Keep enduring in the faith. The Most High will provide all things. He will provide fellowship. A means to be, you know, fellowship with other brothers and sisters in the flesh, you know, that everything's in the most highest time frame of things and in his time frame. You know, as long as we diligently seek in the Lord, the most high will always provide a way. All praises to the most high in Christ. Our brother, our king, peace and blessings to you as well, brother, to your home. You insist, blessings to your home. All right, Israel, that's all I had. All right, so stay strong. All right, pray for one another. Love y'all. And uh, we'll get up next time, Lord will. Peace and blessings.